partnership with the WBCA and the V Foundation to bring awareness and support for women's cancer research. A big one today, Maryland coming up against Iowa. My name is Tanaya Davis, and today I play for my great-grandmother, Evelyn Ward. My name's Kathleen Doyle, and today I play for my grandma, Marianne. My name's Alexis Civilian, and today I'm playing for my great-grandmother, Louise Kendall. My name is Megan Gustafson, and today I play for my Aunt Nancy, Aunt Shar, and Cousin Bernie. Hi, my name is Logan Cook. I'm playing for Austin Schrader, also known as Flash. Today, pink is more than just my favorite color. Normally, I just play for the name on the front, but today I'm also playing for the name on the back. On this Play for K weekend in Iowa City, we welcome you to the 2019 Play for K, honoring the KL Cancer Fund in partnership with the WBCA and the V Foundation to bring awareness and support for women's cancer research. You're watching the Big Ten on ESPN, the emphasis on big for this one. It's number seven, Maryland, and number 14, Iowa. With Christy thomas Cuddy, I'm Wayne Randazzo, and Christy, Megan Gustafson, the nation's leading scorer, will try to lead Iowa into a first place tie with Maryland. And it's gonna be huge that Megan Gustafson continues this hot scoring stretch that she is on. She is on pace to become the first player in over 20 years to lead the country in scoring in back-to-back -back seasons. She's doing it through great feeds by the perimeter players. She's doing it off of offensive rebounds. She's so adept because she fills the defense has great hands and great footwork. Megan Gustafson will need to be stopped if Maryland's gonna get a win. How can they do it on the defensive side? Well, it's because of their high pressure defense that they are getting out and scoring almost 22% of their overall points in transition. Quick hands, feisty, tenacious defense around the perimeter, and most of all, Shakira Austin down low protecting paint averaging almost two and a half blocks a game. She's gonna need to be big on defense in order to slow Gustafson this afternoon. A main event style matchup here in Iowa City. And the opening tip belongs to the Terps as Maryland leads the way in the Big Ten, a 12 and two start in the conference for a team that has really dominated the Big Ten since they've arrived. Iowa hoping to knock them off here today at home. The first pull from Maryland Belongs to Blair Watson coming off a huge game, really a breakout for her. 17 points against Nebraska, and Watson gets Maryland on the board. The starting five for Iowa revolves around Gustafson. And Mackenzie Meyer back in the lineup for Iowa. She's healthy after hyper extending her left knee a couple of weeks ago. Trying to slip inside was Kathleen Doyle. It was knocked away from her out of bounds, and Iowa will keep it for now. Shot clock at eight. Referees looked at each other for a moment, but it will be Iowa ball. First touch for Gustafson. She was kind of knocked off her axis a bit by Kyla Charles. And now it's Charles heading to the basket around Gustafson. Couldn't get it. The putback doesn't go for Stephanie Jones. And Iowa ends up with the basketball. It's Gustafson who fights for it and grabs possession for the Hawkeyes. Well, we talk in the open about the defense of Maryland, and it's key because if they can stop Iowa from scoring, that leads into their transition game. Unfortunately, they could not convert on this last trip. And in order to slow Maryland, they're trying, I mean, I'm sorry, in order to slow Iowa, they're picking up full court in a 1 2 2, and it's key that Iowa attacks it like we just saw. Hannah Stewart getting Iowa on the board. A great feed, too, from Tanaya Davis, who averages five assists per game. And Iowa's going to mix up their defense some in the half court, trying to slow down this Maryland half court offense as well. Shakira Austin with the miss. And a mishandle of the dribble from Kathleen Doyle turns it over. Open look, Stephanie Jones has it bounce out. And a rebound for Doyle. And I asked Lisa Bluter yesterday, Based on Maryland's tempo in offense, do you want to try to slow this down? She said, absolutely not. We're going to look to push tempo, score, and stay true to who we've been all season long. We're seeing Iowa in their half-court triangle offense, trying to move the ball side to side, and then ultimately get it inside to Gustafson. Gustafson averaging 27 a game. After a pump fake, or even two, 
Hannah Stewart decided to put the jump shot up, and really that's because they were taking away Gustafson inside. Well, they're going to sag off and try to force other players to beat Iowa tonight, and that's going to be key. Ten players like Myers and as well as Hannah Stewart knock down the long ball. It's Mike Sell who misses the three, and the rebound falls to Kathleen Doyle. And this is where I think Doyle's at her best, is in the open court, at a transition, trying to create off the bounce. Nice bounce pass, and it's underneath for Mackenzie Meyer to score. And that's what you have to do against high-pressure defenses. If they're going to get up and pressure you, you've got to look to go behind them. Great pass and cut to the basket for the two. Mikesell from the free throw line. She is a make machine, normally from three-point range. She leads the Big Ten in threes, but a two that time as Gustafson gets shut down by Shakira Austin. Gustafson this time returning the favor on the defensive side, keeping Austin from scoring. And the game within the game will be those two matched up against one another. Gustafson and Austin on both ends of the floor. Who's going to get the advantage? Tania Davis with the floater and the basket for Davis to give Iowa the lead. The best way to attack high-pressure defense is to go right at them. Great job. They list her at 5-3. I don't think so. But she is all heart, and that is Tania Davis and the way she leads this Iowa Hawkeye ball club. Tyler Charles lost it, but Maryland keeps possession. Shot clock inside of seven. Jones looking for leverage around Stewart with the left hand. Nicely done by Stephanie Jones, who averages 13 points per game. So something to watch regarding this full court pressure of Maryland. It may not be early in the game, but what's the cumulative effect of the high pressure defense on this Iowa ball club? 19th season as the head coach of the Hawkeyes, Lisa Bluter, one of 10 active Division I coaches with more than 700 career victories. She's up to 743, 387 of those representing Iowa City. Amanda Olinger, checking in for Iowa. Amanda Olinger has entered the game for Iowa. She's usually the first one off the bench for the Hawkeyes. Crowd wanted a foul after Gustafson seemed to be pushed. Gustafson draws the triple team and has to kick it out. This is Davis, another runner. If the lane's open, why not? Well, there's not help side defense because they're not helping off of Gustafson. Again, they're going to make other players beat Maryland today. And so far, the supporting cast of Iowa showed up big time. Tonight, Davis has four points. Gustafson still zero. Stepping out of bounds along the baseline was Blair Watson. A timeout on the floor. And if you're small in might, you want to attack, attack, attack. And that is what Tania Davis has done in the early part of this game. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by the Jeep Wrangler, Motor Trends 2019 SUV of the Year. And Domino's, order online and track your order.
Brenda Fries recently celebrated her 500th career victory. And a lot of the recent wins have come from great starts from her Terrapin team. It's been Iowa off to the hot start, though, tonight. And that was big for Iowa to withstand the quick start of Maryland. And they've raised it up a north as we see Olinger, who's come off the bench, attack the rim and finish. The thing I like so far about Iowa's offense, no one's trying to force action. They're taking what the defense gives us. Olinger to the rim, drawing the foul, trying to finish with the old-fashioned three-point play. All 10 points for Iowa have come in the paint. Olinger just 47% free throw shooter, but makes that a three-point play. A very nice start for the Hawkeyes offensively. Five for nine from the field. They shoot 52% for the year, second best in Division One. This ball's out of bounds, will stay with Maryland. Although the Hawkeyes thought that call was not good. And you're seeing Lisa Blitter on your screen continue to switch up the defenses. They work extensively on out-of-bounds defense this morning. She knows every point is precious in a game like today. See if they can work it into Gustafson. There she is, the nation's leading scorer. And she has remained scoreless so far in the first six minutes. A lot of traffic within the paint right now every time she catches the ball. They played it one-on-one, -on -one, but there were a lot of black jerseys around her on that catch. Jumper for Stephanie Jones, who is third in school history right now with her 59% career field goal percentage, adding to it with that basket. Open look from three. Bounces out from Alexis Sevilla. And it will be Maryland ball. Tomorrow night, number four, Virginia is in Blacksburg. Take out number 22, Virginia Tech, in our rivalry week. Big Monday matchup. It'll be the second meeting in the last 23 years, which both teams are ranked in the top 25. The last time, a month ago, when the Cavaliers blew out the Hokies by 22. That's at 7 p.m. Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN app. Like rivalry week. This has become quite a rivalry in and of itself in the Big Ten. And an offensive foul is called here against Kyla Charles, jumping on the back of Tonight Evans. Well, that's the only thing you can do if you're Davis, is make sure that you make contact and drive back. Great job on the box out to draw that foul on Charles. Gotta say, Christy, this has been kind of a one-sided rivalry since Maryland has joined the Big Ten. And Iowa trying to get one back today. Three coming. And it bounces out again from Civilian, fighting for the offensive rebound. Monica Cesano able to get the ball, and he fouled on that play. Well, the, one of the main reasons why Iowa is so adept at scoring is it's not just first chance opportunities. They have bigs that are going and attacking the glass to create second and third chance opportunities. Good job by Cesano, a freshman. Inbound pass was headed her way and it just slipped by her out of bounds. It will be Maryland ball. If you've seen the names on the backs of the Iowa jerseys, they do not have their normal last names. As you can see there, Grandma Marianne on the back of Kathleen Doyle's jersey. They are all for people in their lives that have been affected by cancer. Well, I like what Lisa Bluter said to her team yesterday. She said, hey, you don't normally play for the name on the back of your jersey. You play for the name on the front. But today, you need to and should play for the name on the back. Yep, Lisa Bluter mentioned two things. Fight for Iowa, play for the name on the back of the jersey. And the Hawkeyes off to a good start doing just that so far. <laughs> Kathleen Doyle for three from the corner, it bounces out. Good look, though, and Frazier got the rebound. And the very first drill that Iowa worked on in practice yesterday, they stretched, and then it was full-court transition defense against their scout team. They know they've got to stop Maryland early, stop that ball, and make them score in the half-court offense. So far, they've done a good job of getting back. One thing the bigs of Iowa have done is they have crashed their own offensive glass and they have tried consistently to get a body in them. Unfortunately on that one, a foul is called 
on Iowa. Oh, I'm sorry, jump ball. Jump ball, but Maryland keeping possession. Iowa has fought for every loose ball so far. I think Gustafson is back in the game for Iowa. Watson almost lost it. And you're seeing Iowa go over the top of those on-ball screens, especially with Mike Sell and Watson because of how good from the long ball they are knocking down the three. Good shot from the baseline for Frazier. Doyle with the aggressive take. Austin was all over her for that block. Shakira Austin has already set a Maryland freshman record with 62 blocks this year. Well, why can Maryland get up and pressure around the perimeter? It is because they have a shot blocker like Austin down low to protect the paint. Austin is six foot five and a confident freshman at that. Foul on the floor against Maryland. Blair Watson called for that foul. Already five fouls against Maryland in this first quarter. None against Iowa. So the Hawkeyes will have some free throw attempts for the next minute 42 after they get fouled. As Kathleen Doyle will be at the free throw line. 68% free throw shooter. Barry's the first. Mike Sell back in for Maryland. Doyle's been in and out of the lineup this year. Playing in just her 19th game out of 26. Been able to make both free throws. Iowa in general, a very good free throw shooting team. Around 75% for the year. Open look from three. Shanice Lewis knocks it down. Lewis eighth in school history from three-point range. She is wide open. Well, again, head coaches have to pick their poison when you face high-scoring teams like, we, like we're seeing today. And one of the things is they do not want to allow Austin to get to the rim off dribble penetration. That forced help side, that left she's wide open to knock down the three. Free throw jumper for Hannah Stewart. Locked down to six. Lewis finally gets rid of it. From the free throw line, the jumper falls out from Brianna Frazier. Still the loose ball, almost all the way to half court, and they're going to call Frazier for a travel. She thought she was fouled. I was mixing up that defense. It's helping on dribble penetration. Shanice Lewis spots up. Great find. Great job of knocking down the three. has been the game we expected so far back and forth both teams fighting for every loose ball has been a hearty effort on each side to begin this one well games like this are about momentum that was a huge traveling call because this allows Iowa milk the clock take that last shot of the quarter gain the momentum going into the break shot clock is off Tania Davis hoping that Shanice Lewis backs off a bit and clock down to about five seconds, and Gustafson gets on the board for the first time today. It took her all ten minutes in the opening quarter to get one, but Megan Gustafson, the nation's leading scorer, is on the board, and Iowa has a three-point lead at the end of one. The power of one. Every minute, a woman is diagnosed with cancer. One mother, one daughter, one wife. The KEOW Cancer Fund is working to stop the clock. One dollar, one drug, one life. Play for K weekend here in Iowa City. A pink game as the Hawkeyes don the pink uniforms. In memory of the great KEOW, 737 career wins. 1988 Olympic gold in Seoul. Keep in mind, Coach Yan did not lose her battle to cancer. She simply.
turn the battle over to all of us. And the KL Cancer Fund has awarded seven and a half million dollars to support scientific research and projects that serve the underserved in all cancers affecting women. That's a great cause. Everyone excited to wear the pink today. Well, I think this institution takes it up to a whole nother level. The names on the back of the jersey, the community support, knowing that the hospital is right next door to Culver Hawkeye. Not just breast cancer, but all women's cancer. This game's huge for this team today. And they, and they admit it because it's more than just playing Maryland. It is about bringing awareness to this disease. Lisa Bluter wearing pink. She's also got some cool kicks on to celebrate KL's honor. We'll get you a shot of those shoes a little bit later on today. Nice feed down low. Stephanie Jones plus the foul. Mike Sell with the lead inside, and Jones gets the finish plus one. Great start for Stephanie Jones. She has six points. Well, low post defense will be very unforgiving with both of these ball clubs today because if you get caught high side, that ball's going to go winging in, as we just saw. Jones misses the free throw, but a second chance for Maryland on a Kyla Charles rebound. Charles driving the baseline and turns it over. Kathleen Doyle intercepted it. And Doyle takes it all the way inside. Hannah Stewart gives Iowa a second chance. Three from Mackenzie Meyer rattles out. And Shakira Austin gets the rebound, but a Maryland turnover gives it right back to Iowa. Well, Wayne, we came into this game, and I was concerned about the turnovers because I thought if Iowa couldn't take care of the ball, it would lead to easy buckets for Maryland. However, to this point in the game, it has been Maryland that has struggled with taking care of the ball. That is already their fifth turnover. Maryland does average around 15 a game. They also force roughly the same number of turnovers, so they usually get it back. But the stat through that first quarter is that Maryland was not able to convert any turnovers into points. And coming into today, they were averaging almost 18 points a game off of their opponent's turnovers. So great job by Iowa to protect the ball so far. Stewart trying to work it into Gustafson. It's out of bounds. And it will belong to Maryland. You see the work Terrapin's defense does. They only average an allowance of 58 points per game. It looks like after a brief referee conference, this ball is going to stay with Iowa. Shot clock at nine. Brenda Freeze hoping to get a little bit more love in her hometown. She's from Cedar Rapids, Iowa, not far from here. Always a homecoming when she gets to coach here at Carver Hawkeye Arena. Gustafson had that one ripped away by Stephanie Jones. And with the possession arrow, Maryland ends up forcing a turnover. And Lisa Bluter's telling Myers, drive the ball. The, they are keyed in on Megan Gustafson so far. The perimeter players need to take what the defense gives them. Only two points for Gustafson, who averages 27 a game. Her lowest output this season, 13. She had 15 against Maryland in their game last year. As Frazier tries to bowl over Gustafson, and it's a charge against Maryland. Lisa Bluter was very concerned about her team's screen on the ball defense. But the key to screen on the ball defense is the other four people involved. And we see Gustafson move her feet, take the drive, ultimately take that charge to get her team possession of the ball. Gustafson, regardless of the scoring, the rebounding, she will do what it takes to win. That's the only thing that she cares about. Well, I asked associate head coach Jan Jensen about her yesterday, and she said, Christy, if I asked her to score two points and do somersaults in between every quarter, she goes, she would do it as long as her team wins. She does not care as long as Iowa gets the W. The travel against Doyle, and what an instrumental person that Jan Jeffries has been in Gustafson's development. Jan Jeffries, a former scoring champion herself. Stop and pop from three. Watson's way off. Mike still tried to save it, but it's out of bounds. There's Jan Jeffries. Jan Jensen, rather. Jenny Fitzgerald as well. On the Iowa bench, they have been at Lisa Bluter's side forever. 27th season together. 
including all 19 in Iowa. Jensen and Fitzgerald played for Coach Bluter at Drake. What's that continuity that has led to the consistency in this program? And Lisa Bluter, Bluter said it. She goes, I am blessed that I get to go to work every day with my best friends. She goes, they have autonomy. I trust them comp completely. And let's face it, I don't have to train a new staff member in terms of what we want. For this tenure, this 27 years, they know how one another thinks, they know what to expect from one another, and they know how to make not just their kids better, but one another better as well. I can't even imagine the continuity of having roughly 30 years together. As I mentioned, Jensen and Fitzgerald played for Coach Bluter. They coached together for eight years at Drake and now all 19 at Iowa. Hannah Stewart with the easy jumper. Gustafson got knocked down at the end of that play and a foul was called. Great job by Hannah Stewart reading that her defender was playing off, daring her to shoot. She catches it in rhythm, knocks it down, and at the end of the play, we see Brianna Frazier get called with a foul on Gustafson. Frazier could not believe that foul was called. It gives the ball right back to Iowa. Kind of a make it take it for the Hawkeyes in this situation. Anna Stewart's off to a great start. She has six points. It's been very physical down low with Gustafson. Stewart with the bounce pass. And the underneath layup works for Kathleen Doyle. Beautiful execution of the triangle offense. When the ball was in the air to Stewart down low, Kathleen Doyle takes off on that baseline cut. Great find and finish. Shanice Lewis misses the three. Austin fights for the rebound and the put back off the glass for the big freshman, six foot five, Shakira Austin. Right back on the other end. Tanaya Davis gets the two points back. But well, that's an example of what Lisa Bluter said. We're going to do what we do best, and the tempo is there. They want to score easy in transition. They want to attack that press and score before Maryland can get set up on defense. One thing to watch from Maryland in the half-court sets when they have to execute is they're a set-oriented team, meaning the plays come from the bench. Everybody's got something to do, and Iowa has scouted them well in terms of their defense so far in this game. Hannah Stewart driving to the basket with the left-hand layup. Timeout, Maryland. Hannah Stewart has eight points, and the Hawkeyes have their biggest lead yet. Up seven on first place, Maryland. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Tostitos for every kind of fan. Today, thank you very much. Iowa's got a seven point lead. We know Maryland's not going to go away. As a missed basket from Kyla Charles ends up with Gustafson. A jump ball was called after Charles got in there. And it will be Iowa basketball. Getting to the midway point of the second quarter, and Iowa has kept the intensity up against Maryland. In other words, they are not afraid. <laughs> They were excited. The energy in practice yesterday was like unlike anything I've ever seen. And it was player led. When I asked Lisa Bluter about it, she said, I know I'm lucky. This is a special group of young ladies. They genuinely love playing with one another and they love one another. And you can see that not just off the court, but the chemistry on the court as well. And make no mistake for Iowa, their eye is on the Big Ten title. Well, I asked Lisa Blair this morning, I said, how much did you watch the bracketology and projections? She goes, I don't. She goes, there's one thing we're focused on, and that is a Big Ten championship. Mike Sill hits the three, her 74th of the season. Already the freshman record at Maryland. The school record not far away. That's 91. She's 17 away. Well, she is known for her regiment. 
That is 500 made threes on game day, 1,000 made threes. Not attempts, made on non-game days. And that's the reason she is so consistent from three. Yeah, good job by Kyla Charles diving in there and grabbing the basketball. As a freshman especially, she is so good at measuring up and knocking it down, and that goes back to the muscle memory. How do you get muscle memory? That is the repetitions. This young lady is consistent about her preparation in order to knock down the long ball. There's some flood problems for Maryland yesterday, so they didn't get here to Iowa City until about 11 o'clock last night. Plus, no shoot around this morning, so Mikesell might be a little bit off kilter not having to get her makes in today. Well, the fact that she's already hit two shots, I'm like, all right, she doesn't need the 500 <laughs> shots necessarily on game day. So Sarah Vujacic, we've not seen much of her yet in this one. Shot clock at seven. Austin, the reverse inside, plus the foul. Shakira Austin, the impressive Maryland freshman, draws the Terps closer. When one way to attack a shot blocker is to go to the underside of the backboard and use it to protect, and that's exactly what Austin did against Gusterson. Draws the foul, finishes that reverse layup. Five times already this year, she's been the Big Ten Freshman of the Week, and she pulls Maryland within one. A quick 6-0 run after the Hawkeyes Blew up a seven-point lead. Good timeout for Brenda Freeze. Well, we asked Brenda this morning, talk about the two freshmen for you, White Cell and Austin. And you saw the big grin on her face because she knew they were going to be good and they could impact this team. But the consistency that they've shown, she said, they've made us better because they want to be great. And we're seeing that already in this ballgame. Yeah, they have been great. Both have so far this year. Maryland continuously has incredible recruiting classes. Already the number three recruiting class coming in next year. Gustafson on the bounce pass looking for Olinger, who tried to save it for travel. This week is rivalry week, and on Wednesday we'll have college basketball's greatest rivalry. Number eight, North Carolina battles Zion Williamson, R.J. Barrett, and number two, Duke at Cameron Indoor in a sonic blockbuster, 9 p.m. Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN app. So you can watch anywhere. Those two have split the last eight meetings, but the Blue Devils 14 and seven against North Carolina over the last 10 years. And Duke's got the fancy freshman, including Big Zion. So that should be an incredible matchup as part of rivalry week. And this rivalry between Iowa and Maryland heating up in the Big Ten. These two teams are one and two in the conference. They are separated by one measly game, and that game could be today for Iowa if they're able to score a win on their home court. The right knee of Kyla Charles getting bandaged up. It's a brief delay as Charles got tended to. Well, Charles didn't get back on the court in time, and that's what the officials are saying. So they're forcing Brenda Freeze to sub Charles out. <laughs> and Brenda Freeze is sending Charles right back to the table so that as soon as time goes off the clock, Charles will re-enter this game. Maryland side seems less than enamored by the officials so far today. Brenda Freeze was trying to slip Charles right back in. Got to wait at least a moment. While Shanice Lewis re-enters for Maryland. She had a three earlier. Terps trying to get the lead back after Iowa jumped up by seven. Jones has been hot. Missing off the back of the rim. And Hannah Stewart gets the rebound. Doyle stops and pops. This is short. Loose ball. It's grabbed by Jones. Mike Sill for three. Maryland's back on top. The sharp shooting freshman, Taylor Mikesell, makes it a 9-0 Maryland run. There have already been eight lead changes in this game. Stewart traveled, and Iowa turns it over. I spoke about how important transition defense was going to be for Iowa in a complete breakdown in the last possession as they left one of the best three-point shooters in the country, wide open from three, as Mikesell knocks it down again. 
Maryland's on a nine nothing run. They've got the lead back over Iowa and Taylor Mike Shell has drained a couple of three. She has eight points to lead the Terps today. Maryland doesn't have one go to score. They kind of spread it out offensively. And those are the dangerous teams because you can't key in on just one player. And let's face it. Any of these Maryland players are capable of putting up 20, 30 points a game, but they are so unselfish. They work to get the best shot each trip down the floor. Have six players that average at least eight points per game. That's for a team that only runs about seven or eight deep. Stop and pop. The little jumper missed for Charles, but right there for the putback, Stephanie Jones. She has eight points. And that's the difference when 6-2 goes to rebound over 5-3. She went straight up, and there was nothing Tania Davis could do about it. And Iowa get Megan Gustafson rolling. Only one for five from the field. She has two points. And that's where I feel like the ball needs to go into Gustafson from the high post because that double cannot get there in time. From this point on, I think Hannah Stewart is key for this Iowa offense because she is one of the best passers at getting the ball inside to Gustafson. And from there, Gustafson knows what to do with the ball, fills the defense, drop steps baseline side, finishes, and gets to the free throw line. Gustafson working on 10 straight 20-point games. Get this about Megan Gustafson. She scored 23 points in the season opener. Her average for the year has not dipped under that number since game one. And let's face it, she's not just scoring. She's scoring with a high percentage. There's a lot of players out there who can put up 20, 30 points a night, but they may also be putting up almost 30 shots a night. She is so efficient in her field goal shooting. How about Austin flying in for that offensive rebound? She was fouled, and she'll go to the free throw line. Terrific effort by Shakira Austin to possibly get Maryland some points out the line here. Well, one thing about boxing out, it's not as easy as always talking about just boxing out your man. That started with some dribble penetration, and Stewart did not was not able to get her backside into Austin. That 6-5 link is so hard to stop unless you're already in her and pushing back. She's only a 48% free throw shooter, though. She was ESPN's number three overall recruit coming out of last year. And Austin makes that second free throw. A couple of fouls against Hannah Stewart, so she goes out. Is that my fault? Did I just set her up for that and jinx her when I said she's the most important person? Hey, we're not taking any responsibility offense. here. Gustafson had that one knocked away from her. Out of bounds off of Jones. Still plenty of time on the shot clock. Winding down here in the first half. From Carver Hawkeye as Iowa and Maryland battling for the top spot in the Big Ten. If Iowa wins, they'll be tied for first with Maryland. Step back three. Davis connects. Davis kicked it out of bounds. Tania Davis with the pull from three to give Iowa the lead. Big shot by the senior. Comes off the on ball, reads that the defender goes under, so she does a little step back and knocks down the three. Beautifully done by Tania Davis, who's had each of her last two seasons end with ACL injuries. Hoping to keep this one all the way to the finish line. Austin against the double team over Gustafson. And another foul is called. This will be the second against Gustafson. They look back to Tania Davis's biggest shot of the year against Iowa State in the waning seconds of that game, breaking a tie, draining a three, giving Iowa a three-point win over Iowa State. The Hawkeyes back-to-back -back years beating their rivals from Ames. Last year winning in Ames for the first time since 1989 and winning again this year at home thanks to Tania Davis. And Wayne, that's the second time on a drive by Austin that a foul's been called on Gustafson. That was something Lisa Blitter was very concerned about yesterday, was just Austin's ability to drive from the high post and how could Gustafson defend it. Side of a minute to play in this first half. A battle so far in Iowa City. Olinger misses the jumper. Austin took the rebound away from her own teammate. 
Axel fired it down low. Stephanie Jones with the layup. Just miscommunication by Iowa in terms of the transition there. They didn't get matched up, and Maryland made them pay. Gustafson down low, off the glass, off the rim, and through for Megan Gustafson. Great find by Mackenzie Meyer with the bounce pass to lead Gustafson to the rim. Shot clock is off. It's Maryland ball. A terrific first half in Iowa City. Out of bounds off of Iowa. Still five and a half seconds left in the first half. Tomorrow night, number four, Virginia in Blacksburg. Take on number 22, Virginia Tech. Rivalry week, big Monday matchup, 7 p.m. Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN app. Final seconds of the first half. Mikesell for three. It's off the back of the rim and into the hands of Sassano as this first half ends in a tie. 33-33, we go to Cheney Ogabuke, Deb Antonelli, and Andy Landers in the studio. Welcome back to the 2019 Play for K, honoring the K Out Cancer Fund in partnership with the WBCA and the B Foundation to bring awareness and support for women's cancer research. Second half about to begin here in Iowa City and with Christy Thomas Cuddy. I'm Wayne Randazzo. We saw why these two teams are the top two in the Big Ten. A fantastic first half. What was your take? Great defense by Maryland. They may not be turning Iowa over at the rate they're accustomed to. However, they're doing a great job on Megan Gustafson. But the flip side of that, it is the freshmen that are showing up big for Maryland in the first half. It has been Mike Sale with the long ball. Two for four from three in the first half. But her fellow freshman, Shakira Austin, has been huge on defense, protecting the paint with two blocks. And then she's done it on the scoring column as well with seven points and tops it off with seven rebounds. First time Iowa has been tied at halftime all season, just the second time for Maryland. A back and forth battle. Led to Iowa shooting 48%. Maryland didn't shoot as well, but made four threes. And they locked down Megan Gustafson, who was fouled there. But Gustafson in the first half, just three for seven, seven points, four rebounds. Her lowest scoring output this year is 13. Brenda Freeze told us before the game she'd like to keep her around 18 to 20. Right now, Gustafson on pace for 14. You have to believe Maryland has a they have a plan for sure for Gustafson. Last year held her to 15 points in 35 minutes at Maryland already in this game have kept her in check. And I'll say it again, it's not the one-on-one -on -one battle. It is a team defense. They are playing off other players and forcing them to knock down shots. Gustafson makes one of two. She gives Iowa the lead back. Already several lead changes in this game. Going on a dozen in the first 20 minutes and change. Stephanie Jones was great in the first half. This time a feed, and Frazier with the hook as she was fading away. The senior, Brianna Frazier. She just seems to be that glue player for Maryland. If you need a bucket, I'll do it. If you need defense, I'm going to give it to you. If you need the rebound, I'm your player, coach. Has just been steady this season. 14 points, eight rebounds against Nebraska the other night. Charles with the attack. Gustafson got a piece of it. Jones keeps it alive. There's Frazier again, this time missing. And Jones with an offensive rebound. She pulls back, misses a jumper. And finally, Iowa gets possession. Anna Stewart did that a lot in the first half. Misses here. Gustafson, the offensive rebound and the putback. Megan Gustafson is so adept at tracking the flight of the ball. She knows where those misses are going to go. She attacks the rebound, gets the second chance, and makes Maryland pay. Charles trying to split the defense. A foul is called against Iowa. If you can't get the ball inside to Megan Gustafson, no big deal. I'm going to go clean up the glass and get my own two points. A great article in the Washington Post this weekend about Gustafson and the Mikan drill that she does. That's kind of a play off of it where you 
put a ball up on one side, rebound it on the other, and go back and forth. Except she does it with two basketballs instead of one. And she set her goal as she tried to do it with three, which I'm not quite sure. She's good. I'm not sure if she's that good. <laughs> well, if anyone can do it, it's her. Amen to that. How about her bringing that drill from about 80 years ago back into play? Well, something, tells me, basics, right? something tells me her assistant coach, Jan Jensen, has something to do with yes. that. A great post player in her time. George Mike and drill with Ray Meyer back in those old DePaul days. Maryland ball after Iowa's 10th turnover. This is something Iowa wanted to avoid was turning the ball over against this Maryland team. They usually turn it into points. Jones wasn't quite ready for that weak side pass from Frazier. You see Megan Gustafson channeling George Mike, and this is just with the one ball. She does it usually with two. You're missing the fact she has gloves on, and it looks like <laughs> it is the middle of winter, whether it's here in Iowa or Wisconsin. Yeah, so, well. um, imagine now a second ball where you have to keep it up the entire time, and you're going from side to side. Every post player has caught this drill. Gustafson ripped the ball away there, got her own rebound, trying to fight for it again, and the jump ball is called. When I asked the coaching staff about what makes her so special, they said her tenacity, her work ethic. Doesn't say a lot, lets her work speak for itself. Unfortunately, couldn't convert, but stayed with her shot. Maryland ties it up. We're going the other way. Open three, Kyla Charles misses wildly, and Gustafson gets the rebound. Saw Gustafson working on her drill outdoors. I think it's cold here in Iowa City, Christy. Go to Port Wing, Wisconsin. <laughs> You know, I'm, I'm going to say that for the summer months. <laughs> this is a southern girl who's not quite used to this cold. Yeah, I know your southern blood has been calling a foul of this <laughs> Iowa weather. Good shot from Kathleen Doyle. Charles steps back along the baseline. Olinger gets the rebound. Megan Gustafson on the watch list for every trophy you could think of. He's been Big Ten Player of the Week, a record 11 times this year. Can I go on record asking that that award just be renamed after Maine Gustafson? I mean, it's almost like a formality right now because of her consistent play throughout this season. She won it nine times last year. They might as well just name it after her. Surprised they just don't start voting for the second best player of the week <laughs> to give it to somebody else. Kathleen Doyle at the free throw line. Doyle, 68% free throw shooter, makes the first. Mentioned it earlier, but it's worth mentioning again that the Iowa players on the backs of their jerseys are wearing the names of people in their lives that have been affected by cancer. See right there on Alexis Civilian, that's her great grandmother, Kendall, on the back of her jersey. Five point lead for Iowa, their biggest was seven in the first half. Booyah Chips turns it over. It's Doyle with a two against one, taking it herself and getting fouled. And I was excited to see the adjustments by both staffs coming out of halftime. And we're seeing it already from Iowa, switching up the defense, Doyle jumping the passing lane, taking it hard to the rim, drawing that foul. Kathleen Doyle leads the team in steals. She's averaged nearly two and a half per game this year. She's been strong at the free throw line today. Doyle has nine points, five for five at the line. And turning defense into offense. That's usually Maryland's game. And it's Iowa on an eight nothing run. Stephanie Jones quiets the crowd. One thing about the post players from Maryland, they're not true back to the back basket post. They like to reverse pivot and take it. But hey, if you're to said, just get her the ball and she'll do the rest.
This is Megan Gustafson, all of 6'3", running the floor, getting the feed and finishing. They slowed her down in the first half, but you can only keep Megan Gustafson away from the basket for so long. She has come out roaring here in the second half. Well, the one thing, when you lead the country in scoring as a junior, you're going to start seeing different defenses. Now everyone was prepared for her this senior year, which is why it's so remarkable what she's been able to continue to do from a scoring perspective. But what defense hasn't she seen to this point? There have been double teams, triple teams. They face guarded. They brought the double from weak side. They brought it from strong side. She's seen it all, and this staff has as well. They know how to get her touches. Foul against Iowa was called. It's on Doyle, her second. Second team foul in the third quarter against the Hawkeyes. Brenda Freeze and her Terps will not panic down by eight. Looking for three, Blair Watson gets them all. Watson with 17 against Nebraska. She's a year out from her knee injury that cut down last season. I feel like she's turned the corner finally, coming back and feeling healthy. Well, when you can knock it down from long, with a long ball like Maryland can, and when you can defend and turn teams over that way, you're never at a ball club. Down five now, midway through the third. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Wingfest at Golden Corral. Enjoy endless wings plus the whole buffet. Play for K weekend here in Iowa City and Christian know the K out cancer fund it means a lot to you as well. What we'll started off as a breast cancer fund and now it's gone into all female cancers and it affected me directly uh, about a year and a half almost two years ago now I went into my team doctor for routine physical and I'm very blessed that he got on me because I never went to the doctor unless I was sick and when I went in he said Christy your thyroid looks a little enlarged probably nothing but let's get it checked out. And so we ran the blood work, then did the MRI, and then did the biopsy, and I had thyroid cancer. Luckily, it was stage one. It had spread to my lymph nodes. And so a couple months later, in late June, they removed my thyroid and a couple of other lymph nodes. Uh, and I'm happy to say I'm cancer-free due to all the research. I mean, I was at Emory at the time. I was coaching at the time when I was diagnosed and had surgery. And I was so blessed because these doctors knew what to do, they knew how to treat me, and I go back to, I am so lucky that I started going in and getting a physical, it was only the second one I'd ever had, uh, outside of college athletics, and that's how we found it, we found it early, and I am so lu lucky, because thyroid cancer usually goes undiagnosed, and it metastasizes into another form of cancer, and I am here today to say I'm blessed and I am thankful for funds like the KYL Cancer Fund. And you can support the KYL Cancer Fund in partnership with the WBCA and the V Foundation for Cancer Research. Donate at KYL.com. Funds raised will go to women's cancer research. Christy, thank you for sharing that with us. Incredible story. And we're glad you're here with us here today in Iowa City and all of you watching as well as Iowa has put together a seven point lead against Maryland. Defensive stop leading to a miss and a putback for Hannah Stewart that didn't go. Maryland fortunate that that didn't go down. Mike Sell with the stop and pop. She can make it from just about anywhere and it's a five point game. When Mike Sell crosses half court, you've got to have a player on her, but that's the little range this young lady has. Transition defense dropped all the way into the paint. Great read by the freshman to raise up and knock down that pull-up jumper. Gustafson around Frazier and the left hand off the glass for the nation's leading score. The Big Ten's all-time leading score. Frazier gets it right back. Tanaya Davis kept her dribble as she tumbled. What a job by Davis to keep it alive. Gustafson back down low, high off the glass. And points 25 one and two will have to wait as Megan Gustafson with her last basket reached 2,500 career points. Wow. 
Absolutely incredible. All-time leading scorer in Iowa history, men's and women's. Big Ten's all-time leading scorer. She also set the Wisconsin high school scoring record when she was in high school scoring over 3,000 points up in Port Wing. Well, I asked the staff yesterday, you knew she could score in high school, but that's high school. And it was a smaller division, it was 1A. And they said, we knew she'd be good, we knew she'd help us, but her work ethic took it to a whole nother level. And you'd like to see hard work rewarded, and that's what we're seeing in and of itself when it comes to Megan Gustafson. With a win, Iowa would be tied with Maryland for first place. But Maryland doesn't want to give up the top spot. And Stephanie Jones will be at the free throw line with a chance for a three-point play. Movement without the ball. That's what big time players do. They don't stand and watch. Jones cuts to the basket. Great feed and finish. Great game that Jones is having. Her sister Brianna played for Brenda Freeze at Maryland earlier in this decade. Jones missing that free throw attempt. And a rebound for Gustafson. She's also the school's all-time leading rebounder, by the way. Jumper from Olinger. Too strong. There's another rebound for Gustafson. And that's why she's so special. The play is never over with her until the ball goes through the net. Watson tried to save it, but instead, it's out of bounds off Maryland. There's the numbers for Gustafson. Her 79th career double-double today, 17 points, 11 rebounds. That is also a Big Ten record. Watson kicked it out. Davis coming back in for Iowa. Vujicic returns for the Terps. Stephanie Jones will come out for a moment. Meyer trying to bounce around Watson. Shot clock at six. This is Davis on the attack inside. She was stripped. Ball is loose. Gustafson fights for it. One on the shot clock as Iowa maintains possession. You got to believe this is going to be a lob of some sort for Gustafson with only one second to go on the shot clock. Tania Davis will get it in. Trying to rush it down underneath to civilian, but kind of rolled off her finger for a moment, and that allowed a shot clock violation to occur. So Maryland will have it. And this five-point game with a lot on the line here today in Iowa City. Vujicic, the lefty, misses with an air ball. Davis off the feed from Olinger, drops the three. Tania Davis has two today. She's five for six from the field and has 14 points. I feel like every time Maryland's grabbed the momentum back, Davis has stepped up and hit that three ball. Eight point lead, Iowa's biggest. It rolls out for Kyla Charles and a foul is called after the Gustafson rebound. In big games, you need your leaders, your veterans to step up, and that's what Tania Davis is doing here this afternoon. How meaningful this must be to Tania Davis, a senior. Sophomore season ended with an ACL injury. So did her junior season. Tania Davis trying to help the Hawkeyes 
to at least a share of the Big Ten title for the first time since 2008. They get into a first place tie with a win today and Megan Gustafson hits the first free throw. She is 18. Olinger's out, Stewart's back in. There's the standings, Maryland one, Iowa two. They'll be tied for first if the Hawkeyes can pull off the victory today. This is their only regular season meeting. Only three regular season games left for both teams after today. You could argue this is the biggest game for Iowa in roughly a decade. They've responded with a 10 point lead. Foul away from the ball. It's against Doyle. That's actually on Meyer, not Doyle. That's good for Doyle. She has three fouls. Mackenzie Meyer with her first. Fourth team foul, so one more would put Maryland at the line. Fadeaway jumper. Blair Watson strong from the baseline. Credit the screener for Watson getting open. All she needed was a split second to knock down the jumper. A four and a half second difference between the shot clock and game clock. As the third quarter winds down here in Iowa City. And what a quarter it's been for the Hawkeyes. Shot clock to five. Davis takes it inside, ran into a tree. Named Shakira Austin. Under five seconds left. Mike Sell gets it to Charles. Three at the buzzer, and it doesn't go for Kyla Charles. This game was tied at halftime, but then Megan Gustafson erupted. She's up to 19 points, 12 in the third quarter, and the Hawkeyes lead by eight. Iowa trying to lock up Maryland in a first place tie here in Iowa City. Another good game follows us, Louisville against Miami. With more on that, here's Carolyn Peck. What makes Asia Durr so good? It's all explained by this sleep mask. Night, night, when she hits that three, what she, that's what she says to her opponents. She also has that mid-range jump shot, and she can get all the way to the basket. All right, Carolyn, thank you very much. Asia Durr trying to lead the number two Cardinals to a win later today against Miami on ESPN2. First, the end of this one. And what a great game it's been here in Iowa City. As Maryland opens up the fourth quarter with a three from Blair Watson. Watson has 11 points. And it's been tight throughout. Iowa's had some extended periods where they've opened up a bit of a lead. But Maryland is right there. Well, both these ball clubs know what's at stake. Yes, three games to go in Big Ten play, but both, I, no coach is ever going to admit this, but I think every Big Ten fan will admit to this. They've had this game circled since the schedule came out as far as implications regarding this Big Ten regular season championship. Those two teams were picked to finish first and second. That's exactly how it's gone. As Scottsdale got it knocked away inside. Maryland has been a force in the Big Ten ever since they've arrived. In the Big Ten Tournament Championship game every year. They won it three times. Iowa's not won the Big Ten Tournament since 2001 as Stephanie Jones makes it even closer. Good ball movement from Iowa. Some terrific passing, but it didn't lead to a shot. Leads to a reset. Instead, Doyle around Vujicic, a tough angle. It's out of bounds off of Iowa. I like the aggressiveness of Doyle trying to get into the rim, but I thought defense was really good. I would have preferred for her just to kick it back out and work a little bit more of the, uh, the shot clock to get a higher percentage field goal attempt. and mishandled the pass from Vujicic and it's out of bounds. The exact same play that Maryland began this fourth quarter on, a little misdirection with Watson coming and wrapping around. That time she just could not handle the pass. Another turnover, this time Maryland ends up with it. Mike Sell with the runner and it's a one point game in Iowa City. 
Every time Iowa tries to slip away, Maryland roars back. Miss three from Davis. The Terps on a 7-0 run to start the fourth quarter. Vujicic was wide open. They didn't get it around to her. There goes Mike Sell from the top. It's Mike Sell who gives Maryland the lead. The Terps have scored the first nine points of the fourth quarter, and Iowa needs a timeout as Maryland's back on top. Today, thank you very much. It's been a great game here in Iowa City. Back and forth, 14 lead changes, including one to start the fourth quarter thanks to a 9-0 Maryland run. Megan Gustafson makes it a 15th lead change and gives Iowa the advantage again. Well, I don't have over 700 wins like Lisa Bluter does, but I would have done the exact same thing coming out of that timeout. Get your All-American a touch. Vujicic misses the three. Doyle the rebound for Iowa. Gustafson over Jones. Missing off the side of the rim and Mike Sell gets the rebound. And the surging Terps. Open look three. Vujicic another miss. Put back for Jones. And Maryland returns to the lead. Wide open, Mackenzie Meyer got loose and scores. And in order to press, you need five players to get set up. Great job by Iowa to get the ball out quick and attack that press and get the layup before Maryland could get the, the zone press set up. This is what a first place battle is supposed to look like. An offensive foul against Shakira Austin. It was almost like a sideline break that Iowa's running against the press. Just gets the ball out quick, and then Doyle finds Meyer for the easy layup and transition. Davis the bounce look, and Gustafson with the finish. 23 for Gustafson, 16 in the second half. Great pass by Davis. Everyone thought she was going to take it to the wing and just does a little drop pass into the low post. Vujicic, another open look. She hasn't made any of them. She gets the ball back, however, keeps it alive, tosses it off the glass. What an effort from Sarah Vujicic. And Doyle was very lucky there. She didn't get called for another foul. I'm not sure how Vujicic took that up and finished. Anna Stewart, she's been knocking down those mid-range jumpers today. Didn't this time, but Gustafson is there to finish it up for Iowa. Degree of difficulty on that finish, I'm gonna say 10. What a remarkable rebound putback by Gustafson. Another missed three from Vujicic, she's 0 for 4. Meyer from the corner. Offensive rebound, Gustafson. Iowa has had the rebounding edge today on Maryland, one of the best rebounding teams in the country. Meyer bounce pass, Gustafson draws contact, and she'll go to the free throw line. Timeout here in Iowa City, midway through the fourth. The Hawkeyes trying to get into a first place tie. Close one here in Iowa City, 66-63. The Hawkeyes with a win with Ty Maryland for first place in the Big Ten. Megan Gustafson in the second half. Christie has been unstoppable. Well, when you're averaging 80 points a game, it's because of assists. And that's what Tania Davis has been doing for this ball club since she arrived, is setting up her teammates. Iowa enters this game third nationally in assists, averaging 22. Tania Davis is a big reason for that. 
Iowa 18-0 this year when they out-rebound their opponent. Who would have thought they would out-rebound Maryland? But Megan Gustafson, of course, has been a huge reason why. 15 rebounds. She has 26 points in the second half. Keep in mind, that's 15 minutes of play. She has 19 points and 11 rebounds. Now 20 and 11 just in the second half for Megan Gustafson. That's most players' entire game of work right there. That's how special this young lady is. She's going to take and exploit whatever the defense gives her. Frazier trying to dip inside around Stewart. And another rebound for Megan Gustafson. And we're seeing this triangle on two from Iowa really affect Maryland because now they're saying other players are going to have to knock down those shots. We're not just going to allow Jones and Watson and Mike Sell to have the shots. Frazier is going to get called for a foul away from the ball. And for Brianna Frazier, that's the end of the day. Her fifth foul, she's out. Gustafson again. Took down Jones in the process. And Iowa's lead is seven. Jones gets two plus the foul. The bounce feed from Shanice Lewis set her up. Great job by Lewis to attack Gustafson off the bounce, pulls the rotation. Jones flashes from the weak side, gets the pass, and draws the foul. Lewis leads the Big Ten and assists per game during conference play. Great setup for Stephanie Jones, who has 21 points to go with eight rebounds. She has been terrific stepping up as Maryland's top scorer today. I almost just want to put Jones and Gustafson in the paint and just pass and just let these two go to work. One-on-one, -on -one, and let's see who's going to win this ballgame. Iowa's got a four-point lead. Four fouls against Maryland here in the fourth quarter, so the next one will be the bonus. Keep that in mind for Iowa. As Stewart, as that one go out of bounds, it will belong to the Terps. And again, every time Iowa gets a lead of more than five, Maryland bounces right back. Well, I just say it's the coaches' chess match against one another. They both will continue to switch up the defenses. The players have to read those changes and make the correct adjustments and knock down shots. Shanice Lewis knocking down that one to make it a one-point game. And now we're seeing Charles face guard Gustafson. This has occurred a couple of times this half. Foul will be called against Kyla Charles. That's her fourth. Sometimes the only way to prevent someone of Gustafson's stature from touching the ball is to not let her get the ball. And so Maryland's throwing everything at her right now. That time, unfortunately, Charles gets called for hooking Gustafson. 15 fouls, so Iowa's at the free throw line from here on out. Kyla Charles with four fouls. She has no points. She is 0 for 10 from the field in this game. Maryland's offense spreads it out anyway, so they've been able to at least handle the fact that their leading scorer in Charles, who averages 16 points per game, has had no points in this one. The officials are looking at this play again. Perhaps to see if there was anything unsportsmanlike against Tyler Charles here, as far as a potential flagrant. Trying to get word on exactly what's going on here as they are checking to see what the last basket was instead. And the last basket from Shanice Lewis was a three as they originally said it was. So it's a one point game. Two timeouts left for Iowa. Maryland has three. And it's Megan Gustafson at the free throw line making the first. 
Gustafson with her 24th double-double of the year. 29 points, 16 rebounds. She has an entire double-double just in the second half. And now a 30-point game, her ninth this season. That's the most in the country. Mike Sell for the tie. Bounces out, Charles runs down the rebound. Another three, Shanice Lewis, that's short. And the rebound drops to Tania Davis. I like the shot by Maryland. One of the highest percentage three-point attempts you can get in the game is off an offensive rebound. Unfortunately, Lewis just couldn't knock it down. Open look in the corner. Three is good for Lexus Civilian. Civilian has subbed in for a lot of players through injuries, and here the redshirt sophomore knocks down a huge three for the Iowa Hawkeyes. This week is Rivalry Week, and on Wednesday we'll have college basketball's greatest rivalry. Number eight, North Carolina, battle Zion Williamson, R.J. Barrett, and number two, Duke at Cameron Indoor in a sonic blockbuster, 9 p.m. Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN app, so you can watch anywhere. Those two teams have split the last eight meetings, and Duke with their incredible freshman class will try to hold off North Carolina on Wednesday night. Here today in Iowa City, the Hawkeyes need a win to climb into a first place tie down the stretch with Maryland. Three Big Ten games remain before the tournament. And Iowa hoping to grab at least a share of the conference title for the first time in 10 years. They have never beaten Maryland as conference opponents. The only time Iowa ever beat Maryland was back in 1992. Look ahead for what's happening with the Hawkeyes at Indiana, at Nebraska. And then they will be at home against North, against Northwestern to finish Big Ten play before the tournament begins on March 6th. Indiana's never an easy place to win at, but I have that Nebraska game scheduled. Iowa sneaked out of victory here, 77 to 71. So by no means is this Big Ten, rest, uh, Big Ten race over with after today. Foul is called. Iowa has a couple of fouls to give here. That's only their second of the fourth quarter. Maryland inbounds to Kyla Charles. Scoreless tonight and scoreless still. But Blair Watson picks up the trash for Maryland and dumped it right back in. 13 for Watson. Coming off a 17-point game against Nebraska. Stewart probably should have just shot that. That's within her range. Bounce pass. Stewart gets a better look after the feed from Mackenzie Meyer. Charles inside. Her first basket of the game. Finally for Maryland's leading scorer. Huge bucket by Charles, but the play there when Stewart hits the floor allows, uh, I'm sorry, allows Maryland to set up in this full court press. I'm surprised they didn't go back to the zone. Instead, just a full court man. Stewart from the free throw line. It bounces away and it goes to Maryland. Shanice Lewis brings it up the floor, spins toward the basket. That one still belongs to Maryland as Lewis found it. Charles forces up the shot. It's loose again, out of bounds, and it stays with the Terps. Actually, now the officials might change that call. They're going to go back to the monitor now and review that play. We'll take a look. See Lewis tiptoeing to stay in bounds. And after it hit off the backboard, it seems like it was tough to call. Maybe Jones, the second look, should tell us. Yep, Jones is the one who tipped it out, so this should be Iowa ball. 
job by our camera crew finding that right angle to give us a clean look. So this will be interesting. We're going to assume at this moment that it is going to be Iowa's ball based on the replay. The question for Lisa Bluter is, do you want the open space to break the press, or do you want to advance the ball and inbound the ball in the half court, which would force Maryland then to have to steal it and go the length of the court? Seems pretty clear again for the replay that Stephanie Jones knocked it out of bounds. But if you're Maryland, what do you think about just starting to foul and extend the game here? I think the hard part is, who do you want to foul? Again, we're talking about a, a pretty adept free throw shooting team in Iowa that they're coming in making almost 76% of those attempts. Sports Center tonight after UFC Fight Night with Booch and Steve Levy. They'll take you inside the cage with our Octagon experts. Plus, Rachel Nichols sits down with Mavericks rookie phenom Luka Doncic in a special SC feature that will move and inspire you. Sports Center, midnight Eastern, 9 Pacific on ESPN and the ESPN app. Wayne, well, I think you need to go over there and help the officials. I mean, yeah, I mean, it looks pretty clear to me. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, I love the replay. As a player and as a coach, you just want to get back out there and play in this dead period of time. I mean, it's a free timeout for both ball, both head coaches, which is a good thing. But we just got the call. I mean, they just wanted to stir up the dramatics as they point Iowa's way. Well, everyone clad in gold and black, as well as pink, approved of that call. Lots of pink here on this play for K weekend. A timeout is being called, a 30-second timeout for Iowa. They have one timeout left. Maryland has two. Inside of a minute, Iowa trying to close out an important victory against the Terps. And so Iowa is going to advance the ball. I imagine if you're Maryland, you want to first and foremost try to deny this inbounds pass. So many teams are so worried about executing a play that they don't get the ball inbounded. So. Right now, I know of a play that Iowa worked on specifically to get the ball in against the high pressure of Maryland. Iowa wants to inbound the ball. They want to take care of it, run this shot clock down. However, Maryland, I'm sure, will foul here. They need to extend this game. You're thinking about brackets and what that will look like soon. A big game for Iowa in that regard as well. They've been labeled as a three seed early on. Bracketology with our guy Charlie Cream. Maryland also a three seed. Purdue trying to sneak in one of the first four out at this point. As a foul was called, Tania Davis got wrapped up. Not a whole lot of room for growth right now, but if things continue to go a certain way, a lot of tough games coming up, especially for one team in the SEC that you thought might have some trouble coming up, or actually in the ACC ahead, as NC State has a tough Tough schedule still coming up. Well, they have Notre Dame at home tomorrow night. Huge game, play for K game at NC State. They still have Louisville on their schedule and Miami. And this is a ball club that continues to shock everyone. They've already suffered four season ending knee injuries, yet somehow Westmore continues to get his ball club W's. So we'll see if Iowa or Maryland, for that matter, can scoot up to a two seed. Timeout from Maryland. Each team with one timeout left. Iowa's got the lead, and Megan Gustafson has been incredible in this second half. There almost needs to be a better word than incredible. We knew she had to come up big for this Iowa team today if they were going to win. And it's not like it's been bad defense by Maryland. It's just been an Iowa offense that has found Gustafson the ball, and they've moved her around. They've got her off screen on the ball with the roll and hit her. They've hit her in the low post. They've hit her from the high post. They've hit her with guards and posts alike. That makes it so difficult for a defense to know at all times where to be and how to get that double team to her. Gustafson, 30 points, 16 rebounds. 23 points in the second half, 12 rebounds since halftime. This game was tied at half, and Iowa's got a five-point lead in the final minute, and Maryland just turned it over. So Iowa's going to look to take the ball out and go full court. Here, if I'm Maryland, I'm not going to let them get the ball in. I'm going to look to deny, try to get a five-second count, and once it does come in, look for that quick foul. And that's who Iowa wanted to get the ball to. 
Mackenzie Meyer right now on the season is 100% from the three-point line. I mean, I'm sorry, from the free throw line. And Iowa today as a team, 21 for 23 at the line. So now their best free throw shooter will try to help ice this game. Mackenzie Meyer has made 42 consecutive free throws dating back to last year. 27 for 27 this year. I was worried about the broadcast of Jinx, but I told you, we're taking no responsibility for anything that happens. Mackenzie Myers still perfect at the free throw line. And Iowa's lead is seven. Maryland needs a quick bucket. Watson had it knocked back. It will stay with Maryland, although it looked like it might have gone over off of Watson after the deflection. They might have to take a look again. This could be Iowa ball once again after a look at the replay. Ball was tipped up. Looks like it will stay with Maryland. Perhaps. I thought it went off a of Meyer's yeah. shoulder. This should be a good angle to tell for sure. And so the ultimate benefactor there is Maryland because Brenda Freese is getting a free timeout without without having to call one. Maryland only has one timeout left. So does Iowa. Keep in mind for Maryland. As we take another look, they've gone 84 and 10 against Big Ten opponents inside of conference play since joining the Big Ten. This is unusual for them to lose at all in conference play. This would only be their third this year. Just an incredible run they've had as a Big Ten school in Iowa trying to catch the Terps. They need a win to make it a first place tie with three games to play. Well, it is now a three possession ball game. A deficit for Maryland. I personally would not try for a three here. I felt like the last two possessions, it's been slow developing plays that have milked time off the clock. I would like to see them get the ball in Charles' hands and attack the rim, get something quick, extend this game versus spending about five to ten seconds trying to get a three. So you look at the standings, Iowa a game behind Maryland for now. It will be tied. If Iowa can hang on, Iowa trying to win at least a share of the Big Ten Championship in the regular season for the first time in 10 years. And it's there for them. They control their own destiny, certainly. Especially within the last 35 and a half seconds of this afternoon's game. Well, if Iowa hangs on, they did the things that you have to do if you're trying to win a championship. And that is, they took relatively good care of the basketball. Most of their turnovers were dead ball turnovers which prevented Maryland from getting out and running in transition. The second thing and a huge thing for Iowa is they have been rebounding, both offensively and defensively. And then especially in this fourth quarter, they've made their free throws. If you want to win championships, you've got to do those things, and you've got to do them consistently. They also got a great crowd here in Iowa City despite a snowstorm this morning. The fans here in Iowa have shown up today. It has been an attendance that has doubled their season average. And Iowa will have the basketball after that replay review. The ball ruled out of bounds off of Maryland. So Iowa try to work it in to someone who can make free throws. And no one makes more than Mackenzie Meyer. 100% for the year. 29 for 29. She'll go back to the line. Great execution by Iowa. Mike Sell just kind of fell asleep and allowed Meyer to streak to get that inbounds pass. Well, after Thursday's win against Illinois, it's been tradition for Lisa Bluter with a big game ahead to make soup. She put on some chicken enchilada soup the other night. They prepped and prepped for Maryland, and all that prep and soup has paid off for Iowa today. I'm going to ask her to bring some of that for the broadcasters <laughs> next time. At least share the recipe. Mike Sill throws up the three. Rebound for Hannah Stewart. 
And this one all but over here in Iowa City. What an effort from start to finish for those ladies in pink here this afternoon. Beat Maryland, you need to play a complete game. I think it's safe to say that Iowa has done that here today. Hannah Stewart makes the first. And Wayne, we can talk about the contributions of Gustafson, but we're looking at four double digit scores for Iowa. Balanced offense attack. Iowa's biggest lead has come here at the end of the game. They're up by 11. Maryland will burn that last timeout. And with an 84-73 lead for Iowa, we have an update in the studio. Back to Chinet. All right, Chinet, thank you very much. Iowa up by 11. Final seconds here in Iowa City. The Hawkeyes on this play for K weekend have had a terrific second half from Megan Gustafson with seven points and four rebounds at halftime. She's up to 31 and 16 now. Typical day at the office for Megan Gustafson. 79th career double double, or 24th this year. She's had one in all but two games this season. Inbound pass is miffed. Iowa cleans it up. Kathleen Doyle with an easy layup. And this crowd in a frenzy here at Carver Hawkeye Arena. The Hawkeyes had first place on their minds. And they are six seconds away from achieving a first place tie in the Big Ten with the Terps. Mike Sell misses the three. Gustafson gets the rebound, appropriately so, as Iowa closes out the win, and they are tied for first in the Big Ten. They beat Maryland 86 to 73 here in Iowa City. For Christy Thomas Cunny, I'm Wayne Rantazzo. We thank you for watching. Next on ESPN2, it's number 20 Miami against number two Louisville.